All right, so these are the notes for lesson 1.2, order of operations and evaluating expressions. Um, okay, let's go. So the warm up was um, given in class. So if you missed that, it was a review of lesson 1.1. Um, just go ahead and review the homework questions. Essential understanding, what am I doing? Okay, so today, um, basically we are going over two things. We are using powers to shorten how to represent repeated multiplication, such as two times two times two times two times two times two. Basically, we can turn that two times two times two, et cetera, into two to the sixth power. Okay, looks like that. And by powers, I do not mean superpowers, even though those kids are adorable. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Definition. So go ahead and use one color to circle this text bubble saying base. When you've circled that, I also want you to circle using that same color the number two. Use a different color, circle the three, and circle exponent. And then lastly, use another color, circle power, and then circle both the three and the two, okay? The reason we did that, our exponent is the small number up in the top right corner. The base is the larger number that kind of holds the fort down, and then the power is the whole thing, okay? So two to the third is a power, all right? Now, the base is what tells us we, what we are multiplying by, and the exponent tells us how many times. So if you look over to the right, it's two times two, times two. The reason there's three is because the exponent is three. The reason we're multiplying by two is because the base is two, okay? A power has two parts. Those two parts are a base and an exponent, okay? The exponent tells you how many times to use the base as a factor that we already just went over. I am going to do one right here. So let's do four to the fourth, okay? Four to the fourth, we are multiplying by four and we are going to do it four times because our exponent is four, okay? Now, four times four is 16 and then four times four is 16. So 16 times 16, we should get 256, okay? So four to the fourth is 256 in simplest form. All right, simplify. So we've got 10 to the seventh, two thirds to the third, and 0 0.2 to the fifth. 10 to the seventh is gonna be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, that's four, times 10 times 10 and times 10. Okay, one trick is you can just write a one and then put seven zeros behind it. In this case, 10 to the seventh is 10 million, okay? Next one, we've got two thirds to the third. When you have a fraction, for example, two thirds to the third, you are going to bring this exponent inside to both terms, okay? Both the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to end up with 2 to the third over 3 to the third, okay? This 2 to the third becomes 2 times 2 times 2, and the 3 to the third becomes 3 times 3 times 3, okay? 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 again, and we get 8. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 again, and we get 27, okay? So our answer is 8 over 27. You could have put it as a decimal and actually divided, okay? 0 0.2 to the fifth. So this one's going to turn out to be 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, okay? And when you multiply all of these together, you should get 0 0.0032. So that's how you do those three. Some more practice, okay? We're gonna go ahead and square the first two and then cube the second one or put it to the third power. So eight squared is eight times eight 
which is 64. 14.65 squared would be 14.65 times 14.65. When you do that with your calculator, which I will do right now, 14.65 times 14.65, you end up with 214 0.6225, okay? And lastly, seven over nine to the third. This becomes seven to the third over nine to the third. Remember this exponent gets distributed to both the numerator and the denominator. This becomes seven times seven times seven and nine times nine times nine. 7 times 7 is 49. Multiply that by 7 again, and you get 343. And 9 times 9 times 9 is 729. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and move on. I think we should get exponents by now. All right, next order of business is PEMDAS. PEMDAS you have probably seen before. Over in the top portion of this page, I would like for you to write down that this is to be used, used for the order of operations. Okay, many of you are familiar with PEMDAS, okay, but we are going to go over it again. The P in PEMDAS stands for parentheses. Okay, the E stands for exponents. The M stands for a multiplication. And the D stands for division. A stands for addition. S stands for subtraction. Okay? And there are two groupings I want you to be made aware of. The M and the D are grouped together, and the A and the S are grouped together. You might be wondering, Mr. Yurko, why did you do that? The reason I grouped them together is because when we get to that point in our process, so for example, for multiplication and division, when you're looking at an expression, you do not do multiplication before division, you do them at the same time, okay? So in other words, you would go from left to right in your expression, and any multiplication or division, you would start to solve at that point. The same goes for addition and subtraction. Basically, think about it that they are weighted the same, so we treat them equally. All right. So next, we've got order of operations examples, okay? So we are going to go over these two examples, and then I believe two more, okay? So the first thing that we need to look for is the P. So are there any parentheses? There sure are. That would be this 6 and minus 2 inside the parentheses. 6 minus 2 becomes 4. We're going to keep the divided by 2. Next, we look at exponents. There are no exponents in here. Multiplication or division. I do see division, okay? I see 4 divided by 2, which is 2, and that is our simplest form. So we didn't even need to get to the addition or subtraction, okay? Next, let's go ahead and look at 5 times 7 minus 4 squared divided by 2. First, let's look for parentheses. I don't see any, so we're done. Exponents, okay? Um, there is this one. So five times seven minus four squared is gonna be four times four, which is 16 divided by two, okay? Next, we are gonna do multiplication or division. In this case, we I see five times seven and I see 16 divided by two. So let's work from left to right. This five times seven becomes 35 minus, and 16 divided by two is eight, okay? When you do 35 minus eight, 
that would be the subtraction portion, so we're right on track. 35 minus 8 becomes 27, okay? All right, and oh, one thing I do need to mention, fractions are different. I want you guys to write this portion down. So the three steps for fraction are simplify the numerator, simplify the denominator, and combine. So for this instance, we have four, 2 to the 4th minus 1. We're going to go ahead and pull that over here. 2 to the 4th minus 1. There are no parentheses, so our next thing is to take care of this exponent that we see. So 2 to the 4th is 16 minus 1. And then there's no multiplication or division, so we're going to move on to addition and subtraction, which we see 16 minus 1 which then becomes 15. So this is our top portion. The bottom portion is already in simplest form. So this is going to turn into, okay, this is going to turn into 15 divided by five, which is simply three, okay? So three is our simplest form of this fraction. And you might be asking why are they different and why are fractions different and make life so hard? So let's take a look at our example that we just looked at. Did you see how I drew parentheses around each, the numerator and the denominator? That is why we can treat them as separate entities, okay? Um, it's because any, the whole numerator can be treated as one parenthesis and the whole denominator can be treated as another parenthesis. So solving those individually is the, our first step, okay? and then we combine them at the end. All right, so let's do another example with a fraction. I'm gonna do the denominator, or the numerator in red, and I'll do the denominator in blue. So let's start off with our red. So we've got four plus three to the fourth. There are no parentheses. Are there exponents? There sure are. So we've got four plus three to the fourth. 3 to the 4th is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 9 times 9, which is 4 plus 81. Next, multiplication or division. We don't see any, we, but we do have addition and subtraction. Let's go ahead and knock that out. 4 plus 81 is 85. Okay? Next, we are going to take a look at the blue portion. Okay? We've got 7 minus 2 which is simply five. All right, so now we are left with, switch back to yellow, 85 divided by five, which is equivalent to 17. So 17 is our answer. All right, evaluating algebraic expressions. This is something I like to call plug and chug, okay? So you are going to plug in and then chug away like a choo-choo train. Okay, so it says, what is the value of the expression for x equals 5 and y equals 2? The first portion of plug and chug is the plug, okay? So we've got to plug in the 5 and the 2 anywhere we see an x and a y. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So this we are going to move over here. So we've got x equals 5, so in our parentheses it's 5 times 2. Be careful, this does not turn into 52. It is five times two. The reason being is because there's an invisible multiplication sign in between the X and the Y, okay? So, and then this was squared, and then we divide by XY, which is five times two. Our first order of business is to deal with the parentheses, okay? I see two of them right now, so let's work from left to right. This is 5 times 2, which is 10 squared divided by 5 times 2, and the other parentheses is also 10. So now we've got 10 squared divided by 10. Our next is to deal with the oops, exponents, E. Okay, so we've got one exponent. I see it right here, this 2. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. 100 squared is just, I'm sorry, 10 squared is just 100, okay? And next we've got multiplication or division. I do see a division sign here. 
100 divided by 10 will give us 10. So that is our answer, 10, okay? That was the chug portion, okay? You are chugging along when you are doing this portion right here. From this point onward, that's the chug portion, okay? You are just chugging along, simplifying stuff, making it really nice and neat, and then coming up with our glorious answer, which is 10. All right, let's move on. So we've got more plug and chug, okay? So this next one, we've got x squared plus x minus 12 divided by y squared. At this time, I would like for you guys to pause the video and try this one on your own, okay? I'm gonna go right through it, but you guys should pause and try this on your own and then check what you got with my answer. So let's go ahead and plug in x equals five and y equals two. I'm gonna use two different colors while we go through this, okay? So we've got x as five squared plus five minus 12 divided by, and then our y is two squared, okay? All right, so our first order of business is solve the parentheses. So I do see two sets of parentheses, but guys, they are already simplified, so we don't do anything with them. Next, we move on to the exponents. I see two exponents, they're both squares. So let's go ahead and do five squared, which is 25, plus five minus 12, divided by two squared becomes four, okay? And this 25 plus five minus 12, we're gonna go ahead and start adding. Just kidding, don't forget about this division sign. Next is multiplication and division. Okay, so we need to take care of this 12 divided by four. So let's go ahead and write 25 plus five minus, now 12 divided by four is three, okay? Now we have all addition and subtraction left, so we can just start from the left and move our way to the right. So 25 plus five is 30, minus three gives us 27. So your answer should be 27. All right, we've got even more practice, okay? Even more practice. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, sorry about that. A equals three and B equals four. So for our first one, we've got three B minus A squared. So it's gonna be three times four minus A, which is three squared. First order of business, take care of the parentheses. They are both simplified, okay? And by simplified, I mean whatever's inside the parentheses. Next, let's look at our exponents. We do have one, it's this three squared. So we're gonna leave this as three times four minus, and now we've got three squared, which becomes nine, okay? Next, multiplication and division, join group together. So three times four is the only multiplication I see, and that should be 12 minus nine, and then addition and subtraction. I see one subtraction here, so 12 minus nine is three, okay? All right, next, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So we've got two times b squared minus seven a. So two times, our b is four from up here, four squared minus seven times, and then A is three, okay? Let's go ahead and start with our parentheses. In this case, our parentheses are already simplified. So we're gonna look at our exponents. I only see one exponent, so let's go ahead and take care of that. Four, two times four squared is 16 minus seven times three. Next, we have multiplication and division. And I see two sets of multiplication. I see two times 16 and seven times three. Um, so two times 16 becomes 32 minus, and then seven times three is 21. And then lastly, we can go ahead and subtract these two with the addition and subtraction part of PEMDAS. And 32 minus 21 is 11, so our answer is 11, okay? 
All right, so my favorite part of this lesson is a Chipotle problem. Why? Because I love Chipotle. Chipotle is like the best place ever. Okay, so you are a Chipotle worker and in one day you make M dollars. You spend three fifths of that money on clothes that same day because you are terrible at saving money. Write an expression for how much money you have left to spend. Okay, so what I first want us to do is underline M dollars and three fifths of that money. Now, you guys have definitely learned this before, okay? But whenever you have a fraction, I'm gonna box in three fifths, a fraction of your original, well, all you have to do is take that fraction, for example, three over five, and multiply it by the original amount. In our case, it's M, okay? So we've got three fifths M. That's how money, much money we spent, okay? So, but what we're looking for is how much money you have left to spend. So if we started with M dollars, we're gonna take away the amount that we spent and that should be how much we have left. So this is the expression it was looking for, okay? All right, moving on. Practice makes perfect round two. The shipping cost of an order at an online store is one-tenth the cost of the items you order. What is an expression for the total cost of a given order? What are the total costs for orders of $43, $79, $95, and $103? Okay? So, first, I want us to make the expression, okay? So, let's say that C represents the cost of an order okay the reason i chose c is because it is the cost now we could have picked any letter you could have picked s you could have picked f you could have picked any letter that you wanted to be the cost of an order okay now it says that the shipping cost is one tenth of the cost of the order so it's going to be one over ten times c that will give us the shipping cost but what it wants us to do is write an expression for the total cost of any given order. So what we have to do is add back the original cost C. So this is our expression. And then as for these, any four of those, all you would do is plug and chug. So plug in, for example, I'll do 43. You plug in 43 for C in both instances. In this case, it's going to be 4.3 plus 43, which gives us 47.3. And you can do that for any of these, okay? All right, moving on. And that's it. So here are the homework problems. I have posted it in Canvas. Go ahead and get started. Um, do your best and email me if you have any questions. Thank you very much.